Hello everyone and welcome to topic 5, which is about classifying part 3 buildings according to subsection 3.2.2. You found this video because it was linked for you in the course, loads, course notes you downloaded from uh, Brightspace. Uh, please be sure to download these course notes to your device of choice. Do not simply rely on being able to access them through Brightspace. Great. Let's get started. Terrific. So let's wrap up or let's summarize maybe where we are. How did we get here? What is the journey we've traveled so far? We started off with topic one, where hopefully you were introduced to what the building code is, how it's laid out between the two volumes, what its different parts are, and how to reference any specific item within the building code. In topic two, we then moved on to introducing you to the major occupancies as identified by the Ontario Building Code, and you even learned how to identify those occupancies. Remember, Appendix A is your friend. Great. Topic three then brought you to being able to distinguish between part three and part nine type buildings, because then that allows you to determine whether the building that you're analyzing or designing or investigating is subject to the requirements of part three of volume one division B of the Ontario Building Code or part nine of volume one division B of the Ontario Building Code, which is very important because both of those are very large, right? So being able which one you're actually being able to know which one you're going to use is very important. Then topic four, the last topic between this current one we learn how to use the skills from part three of the Ontario Building Code to determine the occupancy of a space. That is how many people are expected to be in the space that we're analyzing. Great. So for today's topic, for this video's topic, we're going to learn about how to classify a part three building according to subsection 3.2.2. You're welcome to pause this video while you go grab the Ontario Building Code and find subsection 3.2.2 in Division B, Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. You know it's the right one because it's titled Building Size and Construction Relative to Occupancy. The whole point of this subsection is that it allows the user, right, once you're familiar with this subsection, it allows the user to determine and assign a certain level of protection or a certain level of safety to the structure. And that's because the structure of any building, even when it's under construction, as you see in these images on the screen right now, the structure of any building, even after occupancy, must be afforded a level of safety from fire. And that's where subsection 3.2.2 comes into play. So let's get to this, okay? What does the building code in subsection 3.2.2 mean by level of safety? Especially when it comes to fire in this case. So level of safety to protect the structure. Well, the first thing it's referring to is the so-called combustibility of that material. Whatever the structure is made of and whatever is covering that structure. Combustibility of material refers to really how well a construction material burns, how easily it burns or not easily. The fire resistance rating on the other hand, or FRR for short, refers to an amount of time in either minutes or hours that's been assigned as a level of safety to that material regardless of how well it burns okay now i know this might sound like i'm really saying the same thing just in two different ways but i'm not really but fortunately this topic gets covered a bit more under topic seven 
combustibility of materials and fire resistance rating. So you can skip to that topic if you want to learn more about this. As for what we're doing today with this topic, we're going to learn how to use five main building characteristics to actually identify and assign a level of safety to any part three building. Here are the five main building characteristics. In order, major occupancy, building area, building height, facing how many streets, and sprinklered versus unsprinklered. Now, if you're wondering whether some of these characteristics are familiar to you, it's probably because the top three, we've covered these before, haven't we? Well, don't worry, okay? Because all of these five characteristics, we'll cover them even in more detail in topic six. But for now, just roll with me, okay? We'll make this happen. So here's what's gonna happen. You have now found subsection 3.2.2. Within that subsection, I now want you to identify 63 articles. So starting with article 3.2.220 all the way to article 3.2.283. That's a stack of 63 articles. Please find these now. Don't pull them out. Just make sure that you have them handy because that's what we're going to be using. Okay. What these articles contain is those building characteristics at various stages in a building and various types of building that cannot be exceeded. Okay, so these are basically limits. Each one of these articles contains limits depending on occupancy, depending on how many streets the building faces, depending on area. Okay, and the way that these limits are set up is that you have to choose the least restrictive of the articles. And the way that that's done, like this image is suggesting to you, is backwards. I'm sure at this point you think I've gone local, but I haven't, okay? It will make sense, actually, once we dive into it. I think we should just learn by doing, okay? So let's do that. So. The first example we're going to do, one of three, this is example number one. You're being asked to classify this building, easy, we've done this before, and then determine the requirements for combustibility of material and the fire resistance rating of the floor. Okay? Make sense? It will make sense once we do it. This specific building is an unsprinklered eight-story office building. It faces two streets, as you can see, and it has a building area of 2,400 square meters. What I think I wanna do with this example and all of the upcoming examples is this. I'm gonna link, link its video solution in the description of this YouTube video. That way, then you can have a video that's specifically for this example and the upcoming ones, okay? Example number two. Here is example number two. It's a different building, it looks like it, and what we're being asked is something similar to example number one, which is classify this building and determine the requirements for combustibility of material and the fire resistance rating for floor and roof. So again, after classifying the building, we're being asked to determine the requirements for those levels of safety, the combustibility of material and the fire resistance rating. Okay, this specific building is being identified as an unsprinklered six-story office building. It faces two streets and it has a building area of 2,400 square meters. Okay, lovely. Ah. And the video solution to this example two is gonna be linked for you in the description to this video on YouTube. Example number three. Similar to example number one and two, you're being asked for this building shown for you to classify this building, determine this building's requirements for combustibility of material, and then determine the fire resistance rating for the floor and non-combustible mezzanine. 
This specific building that's shown on the screen is an unsprinklered two-story department store facing two streets with a building area of 850 square meters. This building too, uh, the solution to it will be linked for you in the description to the video. And I also want to mention that once you're done with example three, you'll also be able to then move on to do question number one in the set for homework number two. Because homework is your friend in this course, right? It's practice, practice, practice. Okay, now there's one thing that I do want to point out and that I want to make sure that you're aware of. For this topic and all topics related to the Ontario Building Code, it's practice, 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 okay? I cannot teach you how to do all possible cases and all possible combinations. Instead, what I'm hoping to do is that I teach you how to learn and try to solve problems. So that's why I'm directing you also to do homework so you become comfortable with all various types of problems related to this topic and as well as future topics in this introductory course to the Ontario Building Code. Furthermore, I want to point out that these five main building characteristics will be covered also in topic six, which comes after this. Okay, so there will be more detail about these five items in topic six. And that's it. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Please make sure to check out the solutions to the examples in the description to this video. And I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it you chose to spend it viewing this video. Take care.